And we're going to invite Pastor Heather up to give a good word that we're excited about. So thank you very much. All right. Well, good morning and happy new year, 2023. Is everybody still alive? You know, you are the faithful that show up the night after New Year's Eve here in Hawaii because how many of you had fireworks going off till when? Till when? Three? Three? Two? I know, like, I, I, they're still going, they are still going off. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh. So thank you so much. Welcome. My name is Pastor Heather, and it is such a privilege and honor to get to serve our Hope Chapel family with my husband, Albert. And um, I just want to welcome you, whether you're online, whether you've come this morning with your Ohana and you're still wiping that um, sleep from your eyes and getting some more coffee, welcome. And not just welcome to a service, not just welcome to a church on a Sunday morning, but can I just say this? Welcome in to all that God has for you for the year 2023. Amen? Because just as we sang this morning that we serve and we worship a God that will not fail, that he is faithful, and he will he that begin a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. And that means that there is work that he is doing in you in this moment, now, in this very second, that is going to usher you into this next season for 2023. Amen? Amen. So I am so excited to get to be here with you this morning because really for January 1st, as we head into the new year, our team, our pastoral team, our leadership team regularly begins to poise our heart and our mind toward what's next. God, what are you saying to our church? What do you have for us? We set our, our spirits like up upon a rampart and we say, God, would you show us what's coming so that we can be a people of God spiritually prepared, poised, expectant, and ready for all that you have for us in the year 2023. And so as we were beginning to pray, usually it's about August or September, I begin to just say, God, what's next? What do you have for 2023? What is it that you've done? And what is it that you are yet to be doing as we head into our future? And it was right around August, if you remember you were with us last summer, Pastor Albert began a series called Uprooted. Does anybody remember that series? It was a powerful series on the things that God wants to uproot in our lives that are toxic and unhealthy. And as I was sitting right there in the front row, listening to my husband preach the word, it crossed my mind, man, he is so good looking. It's true. That did cross my mind. He's so good. He's so good at what he does. But with that, the Holy Spirit got in there a little bit too. And he started talking to me. He said, Heather, for 2023, I want my people to learn what it is to be rooted in the things of me. I want my people to be a people that no matter what is going on in our culture, no matter the storms and the chaos of the economy, of global war and conflict, and all of the unknowns, I want my people to be rooted in such a way that they are unshakable and unmovable in the things of me. Would you do that for 2023? Would you teach them what it is to be rooted and established, firmly fixed, strong, and built up in the things of me? So no matter what comes, we will not be moved. And so the Lord just began to talk to me about what it means to be a people that is rooted, that is fixed in him. How many of you a few weeks ago remember that crazy storm that came through? 
Do you remember, like, it was like the week before Christmas, and actually, praise the Lord, Pastor McConnell, we'd been setting up and getting ready for worship practice on Saturday night, and he's like, there's a storm coming, and I was like, I was getting worried. We didn't even set up the tents outside, and that morning was beautiful, and then suddenly, you could just start to see it roll in, and by the afternoon, there's thunder, there's lightning, it is torrential downpour. I'm sitting in my couch, looking out the window and I'm seeing the, the, the rain go this way, right? It's going sideways. It's blowing so hard. And we have about 20 palm trees that line our yard. And I'm watching the palm trees begin to bend towards my window. And I'm thinking at any moment, one of these can go right through my window. I was just kind of like, have you ever had that moment where you're like, I have no control over the situation and I don't know what's next? but this could prove to be dangerous. But here's one of the things that I've learned about palm trees that you might already know, is that palm trees have a root system that has been created to withstand hurricane winds. That in the midst of a torrential storm, and amidst of winds that are blowing the storm sideways, a palm tree remains fixed, firm, and established. And it's not necessarily even with palm trees that it grows as far down as it grows up, but it's because its roots get sent out in all different directions. If if you could have a, a scope that could look underneath the soil, you would see roots going in all different directions, north, south, east, west, spreading out, and their roots have like a ball on the bottom that anchor it into the soil. So that no matter what is taking place on the outside, it is unmovable with its root system underneath the surface. You know, that is so opposite of our culture. Our culture prizes and praises what is seen, what is above the surface. It very rarely is even interested in what is beneath the surface, what is hidden. And yet root system, the root of any plant or any tree is the very vital part of that plant or tree. Without it, it won't survive. Without the roots of the palm tree, it would not survive the wind and the rain and the storms and the torrent. You see, roots are are a funny thing. They're kind of ugly, right? Like roots, you, you don't want to look at roots. I learned, I learned in about third grade science, how many of you did the experiments with either potatoes or lima beans, or you had to grow grass? Has anybody done that in elementary school? You remember? And do you remember your teacher kind of sitting it in a see-through cup so that you could begin to, begin to see what? The roots begin to sprout. You see, plants know this for survival, that the roots must grow first. We're all about the flashy fruit. We're all about the colorful flowers that stem from the top. But all plants and trees know this, that it first has to grow underneath the surface before it can grow above the surface. You see, we might be all about in our public place that flashy fruit, but nature knows this. It's the efficient root that allows it to thrive and survive. Amen? Amen. So I have a confession to make right now. I'm going to be going a little bit off script because my tablet decided to totally cut out on me. But praise the Lord that He's got a word for us that has nothing to do with my notes, and we're just going to keep going. So, Xander, I'm relying on you this morning to help me through my notes. You got it? Thumbs up. You got me, brother? You got me, Bubba? All right, so I said this. I said, our public truly does praise the flashy fruit. The public place demands all of us. It demands our time and our attention. It wants to know what we ate for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it wants a picture of it. It wants to know what we've done for the day. 
It wants to know what we've achieved. It wants to know how many selfies we took, and that filter better make you look 100% better. You see, our culture today prizes what is seen. In fact, it pays for what is seen, and it praises for what is seen. And even though many of us sitting in this room would say that social media and Facebook and Instagram, it shouldn't be the health, you know, the central part of our lives. It shouldn't be the core system. We still find ourselves kind of being sucked in to that system. I know that I do. I, as, I, as I scroll through Facebook and I see all the pictures of the really good looking families this last Christmas, and I see their really cute Christmas pajamas under their cute Christmas tree, and everybody looks so cute and so happy, and the house looks immaculate, and mom has her lashes, and the teenage daughter is hugging on mom as if they're the best friends in the whole world, and they never Never fight. Even me, I get sucked into that what? That public place, that flashy fruit. And here's the lie of the world and the lie that begins to take place in our heart if we're not careful to trust in the things of the world and the trust in man is that we can easily begin to get sucked into that idea that I have to be ambitious and I must drive towards my goals. It's up there on your screen. I think it's that circle. Xander, did you see the circle? There it is. You see, the public place will tell us to do this. It will tell us that it has to start with ambition and drive. And when I'm starting on my Facebook page, it's, I start to feel that ambition and drive like, by next year, my whole family will have matching Christmas pajamas. <laughs> and Albert will wear them. <laughs> he won't. He won't wear them. He won't wear them. He won't wear he won't, he won't. You will never see him in Christmas pajamas. <laughs> um, but this is what the, the world tells us. This is the system of the world and the public place of the world that we start with the ambition and the drive. And that ambition and drive causes us to work more and work harder and come up with that source from within ourselves. And then what, what finally happens is what we, we start to get exhausted. And then when we get exhausted, we have to do this. We got to numb out. We got to check out. We got to come up with a way to refuel and refill ourselves to start the cycle all over again of ambition and drive. And ambition is not bad in and of itself. The question is, where is our source coming from? Where is that drive coming from? Where do we get the strength to keep working and working and then tap out to numb out and then keep working all the more. You see, this is a feudal system that man's kingdom and culture has set up. And some of you can see yourselves in this system and be able to say, yeah, I know what it is to feel that ambition and push and drive to work. And then just to start the cycle of exhaustion and numbing out and start it all over again. Jeremiah goes ahead and tells us what this life looks like when we live life like this in the public place and we put our trust in man and the things of this culture. Jeremiah says this, this is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert and in the salt land where no one lives. I have a picture of what a bush looks like there in the desert where Jeremiah would have been pinning it. And you can see that you've got these little sparse bushes throughout the desert. And if you look right there on the bottom, there's a dry, withered bush there on the bottom corner. You see it? As I was looking at that picture, I was like, Lord, I've lived seasons just like that little dry, withered bush. 
to where it just took one little thing and my branch snapped. To where, yeah, I'm still there, but I'm definitely not thriving. You see, if we live man's way and we put our trust in man's rules, this is what we will begin to look like. We might be surviving, but we are not thriving. But Jeremiah gives us the answer. If we continue in the next verse, he says this, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. This is what a life looks like who is rooted and trusts in the things of the Lord. This is what life looks like. Your, le your leaves will never wither. You will bear fruit in every season. You will not dry out, wear out, numb out. Over and over again, your very root system will be receiving the secret source that is needed for all the provision and protection. I have a picture here of what Jeremiah might have been looking at when he was pinning this. You see, this is in the middle of the Israeli desert, this oasis. Oasis isn't just this fantasy or idea. There are real streams and real parts of the desert that suddenly have streams bubbling up from under the ground that create a life source. And it was as if Jeremiah was saying, be like that tree that's planted by the waters that is ensuring its survival and thrives no matter what comes. Because church, our culture is a desert wasteland. If we rely on the public place and on the kingdoms of man to tell us the currents and conditions and the forecast of what will be for 2023, we will find ourselves um, dry, withered and tapped out. But if we choose to trust in the things of the Lord and root ourselves, scripture says this, send our roots down deep into the secret source of the things of God and surrender to his resource to us. We will thrive no matter what comes for 2023. Amen. I wrote, I, I found this picture and I wanted to pose this idea to you, what if instead of that cycle of ambition and drive that's just like the hamster wheel of life, what if we begin to view our life like a tree? What if we begin to view our life like this tree that is planted and rooted and settled, receiving everything it needs, all the nourishment it needs to be fruitful to be empowered and to multiply? What if instead of the endless cycle that man has us on, what if we receive this picture of a healthy, thriving tree that is bearing fruit in every season? You know, Jesus lived his life like this tree. He knew the secret to the secret place. Although his mission and purpose for his life would be to thrust him into that public place over and over and over again of ministry, he knew the secret to the secret place. We are told about Jesus' life over and over again that he would go away up to the mountain to pray. I have some scriptures up here for you. The first one, Matthew 14, 23, after he had sent them away, that's the disciples. Some of us want to send our children away, don't we? So after he had sent the disciples away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Next scripture, early in the morning while he was still dark, Jesus got up and slipped out to a solitary place to what? Pray. Next scripture. But Jesus often withdrew, 
<laughs> I was thinking about this. I often withdrew to the bathroom when the kids were little. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, and he what? He prayed. You see, not only did Jesus know the secret to the secret place, which was to go off and away in a solitary place, he also knew the secret sauce. How many of you like Chick-fil-A? What makes Chick-fil-A Chick-fil-A? The secret sauce. In fact, when my family dares to go back to the mainland and brave the lines of Chick-fil-A, which can last for like an hour, and, and we get our chicken sandwiches, the first thing we ask is, what do we ask for more of, Gabriel? The secret sauce. It's all about the secret sauce. I used to work at In-N-Out, and they had the animal-style sauce. In and out, all about, I'm telling you guys, 20 years old, I was at in and out with those horrific white pants and those red aprons. But in and out, all about the secret sauce. You go to Pine Tree Cafe and they have that garlic chicken, that deep fried garlic chicken, and they put that aioli over it. It's all about the secret sauce. All about the secret sauce. And Jesus knew the secret sauce to the secret place. And it was prayer, prayer, nothing else. Him and the Father in a quiet place, just talking and praying. Because he knew in that secret place, he would, he would be able to receive the secret source to be able to move on to the public place that he was called to over and over and over again. He knew that it was in the secret place of prayer with his father that he would thrive, not just survive. And that secret sauce was prayer. We're not told he did much else. I'm sure there might have been more, but we're told he prayed. And even for this month, as we head into 21 days of prayer and fasting, our focus is going to be on what it means to be rooted in prayer to make prayer the central focus of our lives, just the very center of how we commune and how we stay rooted in relationship with the Father. Because Jesus knew this, that the secret place, identity is formed. He knew that from the very beginning, he would need to get his identity from another source than what the public place would tell him than what the public place would inform who he was. And here's the thing about identity that we find ourselves in culture. Do we receive identity or do we form it? Is identity something that we receive from another source or do we form it? The public place will tell us that we get to form it. The public place would tell us, you do you. How you feel is your truth, and you get to form it. You get to form it on Facebook. You get to form it on Instagram. You get to form it on TikTok. And here's the danger of when we choose to form our own identity. It's fluid. There's nothing anchoring you, and you are waiting for the rest of the public place to tell you and praise you and approve of the very identity that you formed. But what happens when they don't approve? What happens when that public identity is disapproved by the very public that you're hoping to be approved by? You see, we cannot form our own identity. Our identity must be rooted in the secret source that comes only from the Father. Think about Jesus. I found it fascinating that the very first words that we hear come out of Jesus' mouth is as a young boy, when his parents are feverishly looking for him, he had been lost on a trip, he'd been missing for three days, and Mary finally finds him in the temple. And as the very worried and sort of ticked off mom that she was, she's like, what have you been doing? Where have you been? Did you not? No, we were so scared for your safety. And Jesus says this. He established his identity from the get-go. He goes, don't you know I would be about my 
father's business. Very first thing we hear from Jesus, I'd be about my father's business, establishing identity. Jesus would know that his identity, even as the son of God, would have to be received by the father. He could not form it and fashion it in his own way and on his own. As you fast forward Jesus' life, we come to his water baptism. And as he's being water baptized, what are we told? We, told that, we are told that the heavens open and the Father speaks and pronounces over him, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Identity. And the Father would speak identity over his son before even entering into the public place of his ministry. You see, the father and the son's relationship had nothing to do with the doing of the ambition and drive and work and cycle. It had everything to do with being in relationship with one another. The secret place forms identity. And we as a people of God, when we're rooted in the secret place, we get to receive identity from the Father that says, this is my daughter. And I'm so, so pleased with you. This is my son. I'm so proud of you. I just saw, I just saw your heart. I saw what you did. I saw that act of kindness. I see you coming to me with an openness and a vulnerability. This is my son. This is my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. And we re when we receive that, no matter the wilderness, no matter the currents and conditions of our culture that are telling us we're all together something different, can move us from that identity. We will not be shaken. When Jesus comes out of his water baptism, it says Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. And the very thing that the enemy, the accuser, would tempt Jesus with was his identity. He would say this three times to Jesus in different ways. If you are the son of God. And I have to wonder that if Jesus hadn't rooted himself over and over again in that place of prayer, in that secret source of abiding and connection, I have to wonder if he would have been able to answer with all of his being the truth. As the enemy hammered him and hammered him and hammered him. Henry Nowen talks about this with Jesus in the wilderness. He said, Jesus there, he was tempted with the three compulsions of the world, where the world says, this is how you should form identity. It says, to be relevant, turn these stones into loaves. To be spectacular, throw yourself down. To be powerful, I will give you all these kingdoms. There, Jesus affirmed God as the only source of his identity. You must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The secret place is identity formed. Even me as a pastor, I find myself being driven with the compulsion of where my identity is established. And if I form it quickly, what I do on the platform becomes who I am. Quickly, what someone says about me, what someone says about this amazing message on live stream becomes my identity. Who walks through the doors, who doesn't walk through the doors becomes my identity. And I have to be honest with you, I must find myself over and over again fixed and rooted in the secret place with my father. So that he just says to me, you're my girl, you're my daughter. I love you. I'm enough. Let's do this together. I've given you all you need. It's going to be okay. I'm faithful. I will not fail. Over and over again, church, can we be a people that are rooted in that secret place so that he and he alone can speak identity over us? 
And when he speaks identity over us, this is the second thing that, that happens and that Jesus knew going to this secret place is that strength is formed. We're strengthened. We're built up. We're encouraged. It would say of King David that as he was coming back from the battle lines with all of his men, he would suddenly find himself in 1 Samuel 30 with his wives and all their children gone. That why they had, the men had been away to battle, Scripture says, all the women and children had been taken. And as the men come upon this scene realizing that their wives and children are gone, Scripture says that they grew so distressed and so bitter that they're ready to stone David. They're ready to put all the blame on him. They're ready to say, we went to war for you, and look what we just came back to. And Scripture says this, David strengthened himself in the Lord. David knew the secret to power and strength. And he knew where to go to get it. He knew the secret place and the source to get it. Paul would say this to Timothy. He would say, Timothy, stir up the gift. Fan the flame that was in you with the laying on of hands. For God does not give a spirit of timidity or fear, but he gives a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. He would say, Timothy, stir it up within you. Get to the source. Remember who you are and be strengthened and encouraged in that. The secret place is where strength is formed for us. Courage is built up for what to do this. And this is the last one this morning, church, to give us that renewed sense of purpose and calling. The secret place is where purpose is formed. If you're finding yourself today in a season of transition where you're unsure and unclear what the next steps look like, perhaps you're a student and you're getting ready to graduate, perhaps you're finding yourself in a season as an adult with a job change, a home change, a life change, you're wondering what's next, get to the secret place. He has the answer. And as identity is formed, you will be strengthened and encouraged and built up with the renewed sense of calling and purpose. As Jesus would be going to the garden to pray right before he is getting ready to lay his life down, he would say this, but God, not my will, but your will be done. He would find strength to go to the cross in the secret place and fulfill his calling in the secret place. Let me ask you, where are you rooted this morning? Are you rooted in that secret place where identity, strength, and purpose is coming directly from the Father? Or have you found yourself in that desert wasteland like that bush, knowing that you need a source of life and nourishment, but finding over and over again that what you've tapped into is keeping you dry? Jesus would say this. He would say, remain in me, and I will remain in you. I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You can do no thing. But give yourself fully to me, stay connected to me, you will bear much fruit. And Jeremiah tells us you will bear fruit in every season. As we close this morning, I want to invite the worship team up. And I also want to invite, we're going to be taking communion this morning. I want to invite the ushers up just to pass out communion. And as we close this morning, we wanted to create this sacred space, this place of 
of silence and reflection to be with the Father. Especially after the holidays, we can find ourselves just a little hurried, a little haggard. Our routine has been thrown off. We've had company. We've been partying and hosting and running from thing to thing. And we can find ourselves a little bit like, huh, I need to get to that secret place. I need to get back to that place that I receive my identity. I'm not trying to form it, that I receive strength. I'm not trying to drum it up in myself. And that I received a new sense of purpose and calling. I need to get back to that secret source with the secret sauce in the secret place with him. Amen? And so as we hold this communion in our hand, do this with me. I was, I was praying over communion for us as a church. And I just quoted from John what Jesus would say. He would use the words, remain in me. That idea of being fixed. That idea of being established. That idea of being rooted. We don't remain and then unremain. We don't root in him and then suddenly uproot. But that we remain fixed. And one of the things that communion helps us do is it helps us remember why we remain. And it helps us remember to remain. It gets us back to that center. It gets us back to that source. It gets us back to that space that as we look inside ourselves, maybe we feel a little bit like that dried up little bush that's about ready to crack and break off. But Jesus says, remember, I am the vine, you are the branches. All that you need, you can find in me. Remember that my body was broken for you so that you could be made whole. That my blood was poured out for you so that your sins could be forgiven. Come, bring all of you to me and don't hold back because I have not held myself back from you. Remember. Remember. And so this is what we're going to do this morning. We're going to do things a little different. We're going to take a couple more minutes to just worship. And I want to invite you to partake communion with your secret source, your Savior, Jesus Christ. That it won't be me leading you through communion this morning. It will be your Savior talking with you and walking with you through remembering all that he has done for you. And in a way this morning, communion being that moment in which you say, yes, I receive. I stay rooted. I receive your goodness and your faithfulness and your work in my life. And I look ahead to 2023 saying yes, yes, over and over and over again. So would you do this with me? Would you get yourself in a space, whether that's mentally, get yourself in a space. Don't think about where you're gonna eat in a half an hour, what you gotta do for the rest of your day. Can we just kind of create this sacred moment and just let him talk to you and partake of communion with him as the worship team just begins to sing.
and play. If that means you need to stand, I want you to stand. If that means you need to kneel, I want you to kneel. If that means you need to come forward to the altar to just with your physical body say, I'm moving forward and I'm choosing you. I'm choosing you as my secret source and my secret place. Get to the altar. You'll see that we'll have some prayer team and pastors available for prayer. If you need to make a commitment to the Lord this morning for 2023, get to the altar. We have a prayer board that's gonna be out every week just, to, just to, for you to be able to write your prayer requests and for our church to be able to come around you in prayer and affirm and confirm the work of the Lord. Write out your prayer request saying, this is what I'm seeking God for in 2023. But get to Him, get to that secret place, get to that secret source and tap into all that He has for you. He has brought His full self to you. Would you bring this morning your full self self to him amen so let's do this actually would you do this do this would you stand let's shake off a little bit of this tiredness and would you stand and just begin to do business with the Lord if you need to spread out spread out but I'm gonna be over here next to the prayer board pastor Albert is over here and we're here to pray with you but do not leave this space without receiving and partaking communion with him and ending in worship and in prayer amen and I'll come back up in a few minutes. He won't fail. Let's just take one moment. See, the thing about the secret place is not just coming to him with all that we are. It's allowing him to come and bring all he is. And with that, just the in time, in moment, in season word for you. This can be a scary place for us because we sometimes go, I don't know if I can hear God. But can you trust that in this moment moving forward with him, that he is good enough to make sure that he is heard by you? That your ability to hear him isn't solely based on whether you can hear him, but whether he will make sure you hear him. Because he loves you that much. And he wants to make sure that his son and his daughter hears what he has to say. So would you do this? Would you say, Jesus, I'm listening. What do you want to say to me? What's that word for me that will sustain me as I go forward today, tomorrow? talking to you and it might be a picture it might be a scripture Anybody else have that quick word from the Father that was spoken over you? You can just say it out loud.
You can just even say it in your seat. We're small enough today, we can say it in our seats. What was the word of the Father for you? Steady. Steadfast. Amen. Keep going. Say it louder, Uncle Johnny. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Thank you, Jesus. Keep going. You know my voice and you hear my voice. Wait on me. Thank you, Jesus. You are good enough. Say it again. Serve. Serve. Your invitation. Anybody else? Go ahead, Elizabeth. Wealth, health, and stealth. Amen. Jesus would say this. He would say, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We took a little bit longer this morning, but church, how many would you say, I, I needed that fresh bread? I needed that fresh wine. I needed to be able to stop and say, it's okay that we go a little longer and that we linger a little more. That is the secret of the secret place, amen? Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Some final instructions and invitations for us. Don't forget this moment. Don't forget it was okay to take a little longer, to sit a little while, to listen a little more, and take advantage as we head into this month of prayer. Take advantage of the opportunities that the Lord is giving us to lean in to this secret source with the secret sauce in that silent space. Take advantage of the prayer wall. We wanna pray with you and through this month alongside you, seeking God for you. Take advantage of the workshops. Next week, we're gonna start burn prayer at 8.15 in the morning and we're gonna be taking 20 to 25 minutes to just pray. Come early and just be in God's presence and pray with the family. If you've never fasted before, start entering into this week saying, God, what does it look like for me to set aside something to seek you more deeply? Would you do this with me? Would you just let this be a season of I'm saying yes to him and the invitations that he's He's creating for me to say yes and receive of him. Amen? Amen. Well, Pastor Albert, myself, Pastor Jean, the team will continue to be up here. If you need more prayer or you need to talk to someone, we're here for you. Would you do this? Would you enter into 2023 filled up with the love and the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and go forward today spilling that over into your ohana. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're dismissed. We'll see you next week. You are loved.